Chapter 10, Miss Harmon's Loss. Penny hummed a gay little tune as she clattered down the steps, two at a time, and slid into the chair at the breakfast table. Mr. Parker, who had just been served by Mrs. Weems, sat reading his morning paper. Is that you, Dad, behind all the murder headlines? inquired Penny cheerfully. Mr. Parker lowered the paper, smiling apologetically. Good morning, Penny. I acquired that bad habit years ago. But here is a story which may interest you. Your friend, Miss Harmon, finally made the front page. What happened to her, asked Penny, accepting the paper from her father. Mr. Parker indicated the story in the left column. Miss Harmon's diamond necklace was stolen last night. Doesn't surprise me a bit. The newspaper story disclosed that the dancer's necklace, valued at $10,000, had been worn to the Black Cat, a fashionable nightclub. Miss Harmon had not discovered her loss until she had left the cafe and was in the taxi cab. She had then notified the police. The necklace may have been lost and not stolen, said Penny. Miss Harmon gave me the impression of being a very careless person. She threw her diamonds around as if they were glass. I trust the necklace was insured. The story doesn't say. Mr. Parker frowned, slightly irritated because a reporter on the star had neglected to include every available fact in the news account. He glanced up as Penny said, Dad, didn't you think Miss Harmon's maid seemed rather interested in that diamond necklace? Now that you mention it, yes, but apparently no blame is attached to her. Just the same, she might have taken it. Oh, I'd not consider it very likely if the necklace disappeared at the black cat. From this story, one can't be sure where it was lost. Perhaps Miss Harmon didn't know herself. Mr. Parker folded the paper and slipped it into his coat pocket, began to eat his scrambled eggs and toast. How would you like a little job this morning, Penny? He presented. Shining shoes? No, I thought you might enjoy doing a bit of a reportorial work for me. I'm afraid I'm not very good at it, Penny said, thinking of the great Osandra. You are a very keen observer, complimented her father, and you do have a way with people. Now, Miss Harmon likes you, Penny. I thought she might be more willing to talk to you than one of our regular reporters. I wouldn't mind interviewing Miss Harmon, Penny declared, brightening. Maybe I could find out if Felice really did steal that necklace. You might bring in her signed confession. No, seriously, Penny. The star concerns itself with facts, not fancy. Don't strive for the spectacular. Just learn any facts you can from Miss Harmon and write them up in a simple, interesting way. All right, Grin Penny. Hold the forms until I get to the office with my big story. She hastened through her breakfast and presented herself at the theater shortly after nine. Miss Harmon had not yet arrived from her hotel, so she spent a half an hour chowing with Hank. He told her that he had washed the witch doll picture from the real wall of the building. There had been no new disturbances. Shortly after 9.30, Miss Harmon came with her maid. She greeted Penny warmly and conducting her to the dressing room, began an excited account of the robbery. I am certain the necklace was stolen, although I didn't actually see it taken. I discovered it was missing immediately after I left the black cat last evening. What time was that? Miss Harmon hesitated and then replied, I'm not sure. Shortly after midnight, I believe. Did you notice any suspicious looking persons at the black cat while you were there? No, nope, can't say I did, although one man stared at me in a peculiar way. Then, why are you convinced that the necklace was stolen? Couldn't you have dropped it? I went back to inquire, Miss Harmon said uneasily. I'm sure the necklace was stolen. You had it insured? For only half of its value. And was Felice with you at the time of the robbery? No, I wasn't, said the maid sharply. If you care to know why all this happened, just take a look at that evil thing. She indicated the witch doll, which had been perched on Miss Harmon's dresser. The dancer, too, turned her head to stare at the ugly creation. All my bad luck did start at the time that doll came into my possession, she murmured. First, 
I had had a hard fall, and now my necklace has been stolen. Mark my words, Miss Harmon, it's only the beginning, Felice added darkly. I'd get rid of that doll if I were you. As she finished speaking, someone rapped on the dressing room door. Felice put aside her mending and went to answer the summons. Why, no one's here, she said, but someone left a letter. She picked up a sealed envelope from the floor and offered it to her mistress. Miss Harmon quickly examined the message. She sank down in the chair, her hands trembling. What is it? asked Penny in alarm. Another warning, whispered the dancer. The note says, Remove the witch doll dance from your act, or harm will befall you. Penny examined the message, which had been printed with pencil. The writer had not signed his name. What shall I do? Miss Harmon asked in dismay. The witch dance is the best thing I've ever done. It's drawn a large crowd to the theater. I hate to abandon it, yet I'm afraid to disregard this warning. I should, if I were you, said Penny. Dad says only cowards send anonymous notes. I don't know, Miss Harmon murmured, turning to stare at the witch doll on the dresser. That thing is beginning to give me the creeps. I wish I could send it back to its owner. If it will make you feel better, why don't you? Penny said before she thought. I have an idea where the doll came from. You have, the dancer cried eagerly. Where? From a doll shop out near the edge of town. Could you take me there? Why, yes, I suppose so, Penny said reluctantly. She was sorry that she had revealed her knowledge. Felice wrapped the doll up at once, ordered Miss Harmon, and then go to Mr. Burns, the manager, and tell him I'm changing my act again. You'll give up the witch dance? Penny asked in amazement. For the time being, yes. The warning alarms me. Penny tried to convince Miss Harmon that she was very foolish to abandon the dance, but the young woman remained firm in her decision. Felice was dispatched to the manager's office. She returned in a few minutes, followed by Mr. Burns. What is this, Miss Herman? He began abruptly, ignoring Penny's presence. Your maid tells me you're taking the witch dance out of your act. Yes, I'll substitute my former number. But the witch dance is drawing a crowd, the man protested. You can't change twice in a week, Miss Harmon. I insist that you leave it in your act. And if I should refuse? You'll not, if you're as sensible as I think you are, Miss Harmon. Why, that dance will put you in the big time again. Perhaps you're right, Miss Harmon said slowly. I'll leave the act as it is. Penny, who was watching Felice at that moment, saw the maid's face darken with displeasure. However, after Mr. Burns had gone, she offered no comment upon her mistress' decision. At least I shall return that witch doll to its owner, said Miss Harmon. It will be satisfaction to learn who sent it to me and for what purpose. Penny did not like the idea of accompanying the dancer to Nellie's shop. Having given her promise, she saw no way to avoid that unpleasant duty, but she wondered how the girl would receive them. Leaving Felice behind, Penny and Miss Harmon called a taxi and drove directly to the marble doll shop. Why do you believe the doll came from this particular place, the dancer inquired as they drew up in front of the building. Because I know the shop uses boxes similar to the one you received. It is an exclusive style. Miss Harmon and Penny entered the shop. The showroom was even more dirty and untidy than upon the girl's last visit. From the back room, a bent old woman hobbled out to greet them. Good morning. Good morning, she cackled. What may I do for you this bright morning? Is Nellie here? asked Penny. Nellie went to deliver some packages, replied the old Mrs. Farmer. May I show you some of my pretty dolls? Miss Harmon unwrapped the package she had brought with her. The witch doll dropped on the glass counter in front of the old woman. Dear me, dear me, what do we have here? Someone sent me this doll, Miss Harmon said, and from the wrapping, I have had reason to believe it came from your shop. Oh, no, denied Mrs. Farmer. We don't make dolls like that here. 
I think Nellie might know more about it, said Penny. You may see for yourself that the box is the same type she used here for many months. Miss Farmer kept shaking her head in a bird-like way. We make only pretty dolls in our shop. By this time, Miss Harmon had lost patience. Well, it's no great matter either way, she said with a shrug. Wherever the doll came from, I don't care for it. I'll just leave it here with you. Perhaps you can sell it. Miss Farmer's lips drew into a grimace intended for a smile. Oh, no, dearie, she said in silken tones. I could not possibly take the doll. But I'm giving it to you, protested Mrs. Harmon. Miss Farmer's head bobbed back and forth in vigorous denial. The doll has an evil look, she murmured. I would not keep it in my shop lest it bring misfortune. You must take it with you, dearie. And with a sound in her throat, suspiciously like a chuckle, the old woman picked up the witch doll and thrust it into Miss Harmon's unwilling hands. Do, 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 do.